<laughs> awesome. Okay. Hey, welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards a singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. This is High 45. High 45. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. This is pretty epic, this week. I've been looking forward to it. We haven't done this for a while. It's been Yeah, we've been weeks. away for two weeks. Yeah, went to the singularity conference down in Melbourne. That was fantastic. And then recorded a 50 minute... Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, wrap up with our friend Jeff. Yeah, about came with us. It was good. It's not up yet. It'll be up soon. It'll be mm. up before you see this, so... It'll be pretty, it's pretty fantastic. It's yeah. kind of good. It's a little bit drunk, so... <laughs> and hold it against me. A little bit drunk um, now. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. It's, it's the, uh, it's the... It's human, it's the I'm, I'm not drunk, I'm buzzed. It's the human tradition. It. That's it. Mm. We're meat turbines, as you were saying earlier. No. <laughs> Sorry, meat machines, meat something. Don't quote me. I'll Someone be, a, was I'll be meat attacked. Turbines. You will be, relentlessly. Yeah. Hunted down. Okay, so this week we're going to do predictions. Yeah, well, we've got a bit different. I, I'm, I'm so, uh... <laughs> Yeah, future generations are gonna like laugh at this. You guys are gonna absolutely find this hysterical. Well, see, that's what makes it good. Like after the Arthur C. Clarke thing, that if they're not hysterical, then they're not accurate. Well, that he was predicting like fifty, hundred years. Yeah. Well, we're predicting five, ten, <laughs> and twenty years. Sixty-four k of RAM. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Who would ever want more than that? You know, I didn't actually say that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Anyway, it's a good myth. It is a good meme. Oh, myth. Whatever. Well, so uh, you, you can hey, start some memes. A little bit. Anyway, um, okay, yeah, we'll start off with. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll, you start off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up on this. Um, I've okay, got a comment okay, for one okay. TED. Um, I th- this week I focused on. There's two TED talks, and of course, the train decides to go past right now. And there's even right track where start. Second one today. Yeah. Wow, that is loud. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna talk over the topic. Um, I have two TED talks to talk about, and they're both kind of based around collective intelligence and this. Hive sort of mind, hive sort of cooperative type thing. Uh, the first one is uh, by this guy called Nicholas uh, Christakis about how social networks predict epidemics. And what he's actually doing is he's um, looking at social networks, not actually, not um, online social networks per se, but um, just any social networks like you know your you know local community sports team type thing, okay. um, and how they all interact, and then using that that um, trying to use that data to work out. How to predict epidemics? I mean, um, Google's done this before. They've they've worked out that um, what Google can actually do is if you're ser- if there's a whole bunch of people searching for particular symptoms, like for say the H1N1 virus, they can actually work out and follow the spread of that particular virus yeah. as it becomes you know an epidemic, and they can work out okay. Well, it can be an epidemic in anything, kind of like even an idea. And I yeah. think spreading around. Yeah, well, yeah, Crazy. actually, it's right. Yeah, viral thing. I mean, going viral. I mean, that's yeah, the greatest example. You just remind me. Yeah, throughout this whole thing, he's actually talking about how um, both memes, information, and viruses, Sweet. and how they spread, and, and saying how you can actually work out, you know, and use that data to actually predict where it's going to be. Because at the moment, the way the entire epidemic thing works is the national or whatever international body, yeah. they collect all the um, data from all the hospitals and, you know, you know, medical centers around the world, you got a bug when you be <laughs> Bug beer. Um, and we then what they do, they, they collate all that data, and it takes them about two weeks to even uh, collect all the data together and work out where there's an epi- where an epidemic yeah, is. Yeah, so it takes a long time. Yeah. It's not in the real-time world, which it really should be. Yeah. I mean, especially something as important as that. So this guy's actually trying to work out how to, you know, predict epidemics. Also, how? How, okay. Um... Well, you, you can basically work it out. First of all, you need to make it a network map. Um, so it basically shows, you know, this person links to this person through this connection and oh, yeah. like everyone friends. else does the same thing. Yeah. Or just anyway, just that you interact with that person and stuff. Yeah. I mean, well, obviously, if, if I come to contact you with, with you and I have the H1N1 virus, then, you know, you're uh, susceptible to that. True. I have a very high yeah. chance of getting it. And basically, the idea is it's, it's looking for the influences, essentially. If you look at the people right at the middle, they're the ones that are most likely to get a virus quicker than the others. So in, in terms of a virus, the people at the middle of the network who are you know most connected, you don't want to be them during an epidemic virus outbreak. But if there's like you know gossip information or some particular yeah, juicy you information, want you want to be that person. So okay. they're kind of polar opposites in terms of information and, and uh, viruses. Yeah. But um, the way he did this is um, to actually create a network map is expensive and it takes a really long time. Really difficult. Because like, you have to ask people like, okay, how do you interconnect? Well, it wouldn't be accurate at the time either. I mean, it seems that yeah. it's not good to do at the point. I mean, Facebook has a ton of valuable data on this. Mm, God, yeah. If they opened up, open up an API. BRB, dying, you know. Um, 
But he found a, a really good way to actually do this without creating a, a network map is to just randomly pick like say a thousand people and then ask them who their friends are. Like just one or two friends or three friends. Obviously they'll pick their you know closest best friends and as you actually move back in, as you actually take those people and, and map them all around, you work out who is the influencers, who is actually at the center. Because your friends are by that, that effect, and I forgot what it is, your friends always have more friends than you do. Yeah. Well, on average. Yeah. And That's always. Because awesome. yeah. they're more connected than going in. Yeah. So you can map it even closer. And this is a, a brilliant thing, again, for recommendation Love. engines, like anyone out there doing that stuff. Yeah. Or well, anything it's more you can actually do with creating networks and actually making it more instant. I mean, that's one thing that yeah. I wonder about. It, why can't you just keep on asking friends to nominate another friend to nominate another friend, nominate another friend? Like, do it, say, five levels down. We must go deeper. I mean, you could. As Leonardo. You himself. would. Yeah. And you just keep on going. Well, and you'd that, get roughly you, towards the. You do that naturally. Well, you'd only have to ask them once, though. No, oh, yeah, you'd ask one person once, hey, who's your best friend? And then whoever the best friend was, then you'd ask them, hey, who's your yeah. who's a friend of yours? And you'd ask them, oh, who's yeah, your yeah, friend yeah, of yeah. yours? And you'd ask yeah. them, who's a friend of yours? And you would, by roughly, get towards the middle of the, yeah. the hive. And you can map all the interactions, and that's just taking, starting from a random set. Yeah, things. see, that's great. It's that's awesome. brilliant. <laughs> like, they're, they're, you're going to get some amazing sort of stuff coming out of this, like, one simple sort of exploitation. I wouldn't mind trying that on Twitter or may, may, not Facebook too much, maybe maybe Twitter or may, one of the other networks so you could actually say, hey, nominate a friend and see how close you get into people having a follow account. And I, I wager yeah. that you would uh, you could actually prove his thing. Hey, we should do a blog post about that. That'd be fun. Proving True. the TED Talk. I'm sure he's probably done it. <laughs> yeah, still. <laughs> Using Twitter, so, you know, buzzwords. You'll love them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, my one. Oh, I love this. Love this. Love this video. Um, you just showed it to me tonight, so uh, this was uh, this was from Mr. Nathan, and it's epic. <laughs> Mr. Nathan. Dun, dun, dun. Um, this is from the CEO of the Singularity University, Salim Ismail. I don't know if I pronounced it right, hopefully. Ismaili. Ismaili. Ismail. Ismail. Ismail? Ismail. Well, he's got long hair, doesn't really look it. <laughs> anyway. Um, uh, speaking about... Just the, the idea and about exponential growth. The, the one thing I really wanted to talk to about this because I thought it was just the greatest thing. It just got me so motivated. Maybe jump out, out of the chair. Literally, I, I jumped out of my chair. I was like, holy fuck. And I, had, I went and spoke to you about it just saying my mind is blown. Yeah. Saying that they had, like, you know, the group of people, the Singularity University, all coming together, all talking about their projects and stuff. But do you know what their, their agenda was? Their, their outline, their, their mission statement, so to speak, what united them was that they had to create a project that would impact a billion people in 10 years using the power of exponential technologies. I just thought that was amazing because it's so true that yeah. it, you can do that now. I mean, with the exponential technologies happening all the time, he had a list of six, which I don't have the video open to the right spot. Very sorry. Uh, it was like nanotechnology, AI, biotechnology. Uh, this guy working in um, quantum computers. Quantum computers as well. And then a, a few others. There were six big fields uh, that are experiencing exponential growth. And yeah. we can see through that for more information coming in. At, you know, it's an information-based technology. And so, of course, it's going to be exponential growth. Yeah. But actually utilizing those technologies, especially those in the infant stage, to impact a billion people. And I mean, yeah. you can do that now. And that's what's so fantastic. There's a whole university dedicated, well, university, it's a whole group of people, a whole massive thing there, dedicated towards impacting a large amount of people. It was fantastic. And one other thing I just have to get across before, like, I know I'm going crazy and talking like <laughs> epically fast, but the idea that a billion dollar company can now be made in say like a year or, or, or months even, it's just gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. Billion dollar companies are just gonna happen again and again and again. Yeah. Years back, it used to take like 10 plus years to create a billion dollar company. Now it's fast, using the power of networks. Because, yeah, it's viral. It's viral, exactly. It's, yeah, your thing. Actually, um, again, uh, guys we covered recently, um, Shapeways, you know, the, the yeah. 3D printing company, yeah. they just recently got another $5 million um, funding round. Oh, and, and, I, and I posted on their Facebook uh, update of that. So, like, yeah, you guys are actually going to be a billion dollar company in 10 years oh, if, you, very if you keep up what you're doing, have a 3D printing station in every major city in the world, yeah. and foster your platform for um, yeah. shops. Because oh, they, they allow you, you know, create a design you can and sell. Anything. <laughs> and that, like, if if the current if the traditional you know manufacturing system breaks down and we have to you know three D printing matures, then yeah. everyone's gonna just three D print everything. <laughs> we can speak about that. That's another. I think that might have been one of the other exponential things. It's just 
ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, I, I just loved it. It got me really in the whole exponential view of the world. We, you were saying eventually we could have billion dollar companies created in a day. Yeah, day. I mean, like, why not? You, yeah, you get an idea out there yeah. and you just start, it goes there. I mean, the, the trend is towards smaller and smaller times, so why not? Yeah. Why there, not? Is that, there is that point where if it's doing that so quickly and so many people are doing that, that money becomes irrelevant. Irrelevant. Well, that's what yeah. I'll be speaking about in the predictions of the future. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoilers! <laughs> God, that was so lucky. It was very uh, high-pitched. I do high- like your beer bottle and you think, <laughs> I do high-pitched well. <laughs> a hive-pitched voice? I swear my voice is like breaking over. It's been breaking for the last 10 years. It's, it's finally hit puberty. people. It's finally hit puberty. Hate it. Um, the next, um, uh, no, no, no. the next TED video is from Chris Anderson, who's actually the founder oh, of TED. Oh, the fat. Awesome. Founder slash head, I'm not sure. He's probably the founder. I think he's the founder. Um, and he's actually, he's, his whole talk is about, he, he calls it, he foresees crowd accelerated innovation, which is just collective intelligence again. Oh yeah. And it's amazing. People are starting to catch on to this concept of, hey, a lot of amazing shit emerges from collective intelligence. It's crazy. Yeah. I would say anything. It's not hinted at anyone in particular. Um, he got told off when asking a question at a Singularity conference, saying, well, won't AI emerge from like a lot of people talking, collaborating together? I was like, what? Like magic? He got very angry. Damn. I'll get over it eventually. <laughs> but um, he was, he's, uh, Chris Anderson's main particular focus was, it's a train. Um, <laughs> that was his main focus. He uh, ran the train on many ideas. <laughs> well, because Ted's mainly focused on videos. They're, they're, they're just videos and they're viral videos. Yeah. And it's about sharing ideas through video. I mean, uh, using using visual and sort of auditory you know, information is the most effective of... Damn yeah, straight. There's so much information in a video. Yeah, and um, he, he looks at YouTube and says how much innovation has actually come about from YouTube, from people just creating these random videos mm. and then just showing them around. Because it's so simple. Anyone, anywhere can create a, a video and share any information with just their webcam. He had a lot like, of like industries about that. The unicycle. That was great. Unicycle. Oh yeah, yeah. How um, yeah. Unicyclists were doing all these tricks and then filming them and showing them on YouTube, and then that was um, sp you know, spurring. propelling it because people were like, yeah. oh, that's the best I can beat that, and then yeah. they were like, hey, that's the best I can do better than that. Yeah, and that's happening across the board, like Anything. singers, you know, people doing random little tricks, people doing all sorts of things. And then he ended with Jove. Did you look at Jove? Jove. Joe, uh, he mentioned a journal of visualized experiments. It's a website where oh, they do videos yeah, of their scientific yeah. experiments, saying you've got these papers yeah, published. Now, yeah. This is we'll videotape it and show you how to do it. Yeah, well, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. saying like so much of the scientific data is you know put in these massive reports. Yeah, and you can't access any of their data. But if you show you know, well, how look at here: isolation of stem cells from human pancreatic cancer xenografts. Like, that's cool. It means nothing to me. Like, I wouldn't be able to use this at all. But, I mean, you get in that community, you get in that tight knit of people all around the world working on the same problem. Hey, I'll share this video and show you bitches how it's done. <laughs> and then they'll go, really? That's the best? Well, suck this. And then they'll compete and yeah. have all the best videos coming up. I mean, come on. He actually, he even said that uh, the TED Talks have actually been doing the same thing. Oh, yeah. He, they've had a few really, really high-end TED Talks where people have taken six months to prepare their talk. <laughs> and that's kind of like, it's put pressure on everyone else because they're like, oh, yeah. holy Races shit, I have, to, I have to actually compete against this type thing. <laughs> and so they create really good TED Talks. So you're getting this, you know, I guess kind of like, aggregation of content in you know the purest of forms mm. like here's what you need to know it's you bring all the people together and yeah. just getting them to combine like uh, there was a something we were discussing before i think i don't think this was on high 45 i'm not sure about the coffee shops yeah. and that's where innovation happened yeah um what was that it was a ted talk yeah it was a ted talk that was another one that we just spoke about that recently but yeah. getting people of similar mindset and similar ideas together that's where you grow